जय गुरु शंकर सर्व गुणकार यकर नाहिके उपमन तहरे चरण के ऋदु शतक बरखे प्रणाम with this highest salutation to our guru shrimant hankarde i extend my greetings to the people who thought to me uh, worthy enough to talk few words about our 15th century vaishnavite saint shrimant hankarde i extend my greetings to sanskriti bharati team thank you so much my greetings and salutations to mukunda kam harma dangoria my greetings to professor pande thank you so much and definitely my greetings to sahamantri sushil kumar ji thank you and uh, my co speaker dikshit sharma and definitely ganeshri who had approached me thank you thank you all so much i must uh, mention here that when ganeshri who happened to be an ex hinduite uh, the college where i teach uh, told me that ma'am you need to speak something on our guru jana i couldn't say a no for um whatever little you know whatever little i must put a disclaimer i am in no way an expert on hong kong but whatever little that i know is has largely been for my upbringing in shillong shillong um is my hometown my mother primarily who has been my guru she is a vaishnavite scholar and teaches philosophy at iit guwahati professor archana barua and my jethai whom we call as an elder aunt professor anjana choliha who is again a philosophy professor and has retired as principal jb college urhat these two women have uh, largely been my role models in knowing what about a guru jana is all about so i couldn't have progressed without offering my salutations to my mother and to my auntie now um, i was told that whenever we need to know something about a luminary we have to know something about the background and here if ankur dev or vaishnavism is the thesis let me quickly talk about the anti thesis in philosophy we have been trained that a sound dialogue happens when there is the thesis anti thesis and synthesis so i am um, triggered to talk something about the kamakya devi mandir primarily i'm sure all of you must have heard about kamakya devi and if i and when i talk about kamakya devi let me take you all a little bit more further ahead and talk about lord shiva and goddess sati so as the narrative goes goddess sati had married lord shiva and her father king daksha and she was also known as daksha yayani wasn't very happy with this alliance for he thought that lord shiva as a son in law is not uh, civil enough for the kind of uh, weird um, you know creatures he hangs around with with the snake uh, you know fur uh, around his neck and the lion skin so he wasn't very happy and again as the narrative for the goes uh, he had organized this huge uh, havan or ceremonial of uh, you know fire where every uh, relatives remotely connected distantly connected directly connected were all invited except daksha yayani or sati sati uh, was not able to take it that why is it that my father didn't invite me and she uh, thought that i have been the apple of my father's eye so i need to go maybe my father had forgotten to invite me and uh, goddess sati gate crashes the entire ceremonial event and arches her father that father why didn't you invite me i see everyone present here and that's when that's when king daksha rebukes goddess sati and says that well i told you always i wasn't very happy with the alliance you had entered into so i don't think he is civil enough to be my son in law and the reason why i thought you shouldn't be invited uh, goddess sati was not able to take this uh, rebuke and she self immolates when she self immolates and lord shiva gets to know he comes down crashing and with the corpse of goddess sati starts his tandav nritya or the dance of destruction as we all know seeing this definitely uh, the three lok uh, and obviously were petrified for the dance of destruction has started and lord vishnu chips in and thinks that the only way now to stop this dance of destruction is by separating the corpse 
of goddess Sati that uh, Lord Shiva had flung around his neck. And so with his Sudarshan Chakra, he bis di bisects, the, dissects the part of uh, the corpse goddess Sati. And all these various parts of goddess Sati fell in various parts of India and also Bangladesh, the present Bangladesh, of course. And these are the 51 uh, peats, which are popularly known as Shakti Peet. And the uterus or the womb of goddess Sati fell in the Nilachal hills of Ahom, which is popularly the Ma Kamekya. So goddess Kamekya is nothing uh, but you know an extension of goddess Sati. And so she's called as the bleeding goddess. Now, if um, you know, Hankar Dev's Vaishnavism is thesis, and uh, Kamekha Devi's uh, uh, bleeding goddess is the antithesis. I must mention that the bhog or the uh, charhawa that was given to goddess uh, Kamekha at that time, and it still continues in some way today, was blood, alcohol, meat, uh, you know, human, uh, human flesh, animal. I mean, it was just too much. It was just going haywire. And it is said, in our philosophy, it is said that um, when the Sishya is ready, the Guru appears. So our Guru, Sri Vanta Hankar Dev, appears as an antithesis of this strong tantricism that has been happening in Ahom. Or, and by Assam, I mean the greater Assam, where Nagaland, uh, Mizoram, the Dan Lushai Hills, we are all part of Assam then. So that's how, that's why Hankar Dev and we take, we, uh, the Asmis people, uh, take um, Hankar Dev as an incarnation of Lord Krishna. So the Chatur Bhuj for us is, you know, something which uh, Madhav Dev and some of the other people had seen. So for us, he is an incarnation of Lord Krishna. I wanted to put this on record too. Now, um, I am more used to calling Hankar Dev because in our Assamese uh, dialogue, uh, we don't call Shankar Dev, we call Hankar Dev. So to retain the indigenous touch, I will be addressing our Guru Jana as Hankar Dev, uh, just the way we, we call a home as a home and not as Assam. So I hope, I just wanted to put this as a footnote. Also, um, I just want to add another thing, which is when, um, you know, Lord Vishnu had, um, by, you know, dissected the parts of Goddess Sati and it had uh, fallen in all various parts. Uh, Lord Shiva had entered into deep meditation. You know, he, he had gone into deep meditation and Kamadev or the Devta of emotions, love was sent to invoke upon the love in Lord Shiva. And Lord Shiva opens his Trinayan and ashes down Kamadev. And please understand, Kamdev is the progeny of Bhrigu. And Bhrigu, we, as we know, right, he had the Sanjeevini Vidya, uh, the same Sanjeevini Vidya that Lord Hanuman takes to kind of salvage uh, uh, Lakshmana. So that's that's the Bhrigu um, uh, blessing. So because uh, Kamadeva was the progeny of Bhrigu, he revived back to life and the place, and this is why, this is where I would want all your attention to, the place where Kamadeva revives back to his form again was Pragyotishpur, and that's why the Dan Pragyotishpur is known as Kamru. Assam, not many people are aware of this because today's generation is a little too, you know, they think these are very outdated, but it is so important. It is so important to know one's culture. So our Pragyotishpur today is Kamru because, you know, Kamadev revived his original form there. So this is just a footnote, which I thought was important. Now going ahead, um, Hankar Dev's parents, please understand tantricism was at peak at Assam at that time. So Hankar Dev's parents were also devotees of Lord Shiva, right? And so that's the name, a reason why he was called as Hankar in the first place, Hankar or Shankar. Now, when Hankar Dev, uh, uh, first went to schooling at the age of 12. He, he started late schooling at the age of 12 and his teacher, Madhav Kunduli, realized that this small boy is just not an ordinary boy. There is something in him. And it was Madhav Kunduli who for the first time addressed Hongkor as Dev. So the name Hongkor Dev that he is popularly known now was attributed later. When he was born primarily, he was only known as Hongkor Dev and it was his teacher, Madhav Kundali, who addressed him as Dev. And that's how Hongkor Dev came to us as our blessing. Now, 
Honkardiv realized that if I have to, and also, 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 please understand, um, you know, the Ahom kings, the uh, the Koch Rajwangshi kingdom, the uh, the hilly uh, domains, the tribal people. There was a you know a lot of chaosness in Assam at that time, and um, people were all you know going haywire. Some giving blood to Goddess Kamakya, some giving human flesh. I mean, it was just too much, too much of extremism going on, and it was that that you know. Honkardev arrives and Honkardev in very simple language, the language of Ahomya, uh, where everyone could identify, could connect with, he started his philosophy. And here I begin my lecture on some insights of Honkardev's philosophy now. The first insight of Guru Jana, uh, Guru Jana is our Honkardev, is of course, which my uh, previous speaker had also mentioned, is Ekasarana Harinama Dharma, or simply Ekasarana Nama Dharma, which means I just take refuge in the lotus feet of Lord Krishna or Hari, and that's it. That's it. I don't have to go via bridges or via any windows and doors, which in a way was an attack on the tantricism because to reach to goddess Kamekya, you couldn't go directly to even to offer the bhog of alcohol and you know everything the priest would do that so there was a priest a mediator who acted between goddess Kamekya and the locals but in our vaishnavism there was so the priestly class was done away with it was a direct communion the only quality was to take horon Haron, uh, and I think in Hindi would be Charan, which is you just utter the name of Hari and do Kirtan, and that's about it. Second, the second uh, insight of our Ekasharana Nama Dharma is no idol worship. We don't really um, worship idols. And why is that? Please understand again, and here this is something again very pertinent and not many people are aware of. It is said that... Uh, with all due uh, salutation and respect, Guru, Grand, uh, Guru Nanakji had traveled to uh, the further east of Assam and Guru uh, Nanakji was quite young in those days and he did meet our Srimanta Shankardev. Srimanta Shankardev by then was in his, you know, uh, later years. They did have a dialogue, a philosophical dialogue. And if you notice, the Sikh way of culture, religious culture and our Ahomya way is pretty similar. They also don't have idol worship, you know, they have their Guru Granth, the holy text, and that's what, and not many people know that this is how even Guru Nanakji was in, influenced by Hongkor Dev. This is something I think we need to do more research on, you know, and um, the third important feature was rejection of caste distinction. Uh, for to be a Vaishnavai in our Ahom, and here also I would uh, like to make one clarification. The Vaishnavism of Ahom is somewhat different from the Vaishnavism of Bengal or Manipur because that was more influenced by Mahaprabhu's, um, you know, uh, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. For there, the, uh, the Krishna Radha is very much there. In our, in our Vaishnavism, we don't have Radha, by the way. That's again an interesting part. So Vaishnavism, again, there are various uh, shades. Now, there is no caste distinction in our uh, dharma. And uh, he, uh, uh, you know, our Guru Jana had said that, I'm just going to recite now. Koriya Kolota Kolita Kirtana Ati Pabhe Boykuntha Chotursa Jati. That by chanting the name of God in Kali age, people of all the 36 ca uh, castes, including anyone, you know, who could be a Gwalia, Gwala, who could be a Miri, missing anyone, can reach Boykunt. That is, you just have to utter the name of Hari. No rites, no rituals, no elaborate uh, worshipping, nothing. Nothing is required. And that our locals found it very easy, found it very easy to understand and to connect with. The fourth uh, important insight is something about inclusiveness. You know, why Hong Kong philosophy is so very inclusive. And here I come uh, to the very important uh, role of women how, uh, you know, and also before I, uh, I proceed on to this part, there is something called, uh, you know, I was talking about caste, um, you know, there's no caste distinction. For example, let me just give you a very simple example. My surname, which is Borua, I could be an Ahomia Vaishnavite, I could be an Ahomia Muslim, 
a Borua could be an Ahomia Christian. So in our Borua or in our surnames, you know, you cannot make out from the surname that, oh, okay, uh, Hazorika, Borua, I mean, these are very surnames pertaining to anyone and everyone. So unlike uh, in most of the parts of India, this is where I feel, you know, we have so uh, really advanced on for our identity more than a Hindu, more than a Christian is Ahomia. We are very, very proud of Ahomia. And that is where what Hongkor Dev had given to us. Now, going ahead about inclusiveness, I need to mention as a woman about his uh, Drishti code regarding women. You know, uh, Hongkordev's wife, okay, and again, this is interesting. Hongkordev never really said, though his disciple Madhavdev never really married, but Hongkordev had married twice. Uh, his first wife had passed away, and he married his second wife, uh, Kalindi Ai. Now, Kalindi Ai used to worship because tantricism, as I had said, was at peak in a home in those days. Kalindi Ai used to worship a local uh, murti, you know, a local kind of uh, deity. Hongkor Dev, by the way, never, never disrespected Kalindiai space and said that, oh, how dare you worship a murti? I, Hongkor Dev, you know, am the, uh, I'm someone who is preaching for no idol worship, not at all. He allowed, he had let Kalindiai worship, do whatever she wanted to do. He had given Kalindiai, his wife, the space. And this is what for me is respect all about. The entire community, the entire village, the entire, you know, state is bowing down uh, for Hong Kong Dave. But there the wife stood uh, saying that, well, I continue. And he said, so be it. But of course, as we understand uh, with her conversation with, uh, you know, Madhav Dave, she then realized the uh, futility of just idol worship and all. And she gradually took refuge also in uh, the Horon of uh, uh, Hori or Krishna and made uh, the Bhagavad Gita the primary mode. The second example that I want to share with all of you is about this um, helping hand or staff, okay, the working staff that um, Hong Kong Dave had in his household in those days. And uh, that is um, the name of, uh, you know, Sonderi I, Sonderi I. Please understand, again, this shows how um, blessed, you know, Aham had been for Sundari I, who had been just a maid, you know, just a, a, a helping hand, was washing clothes at the banks. And then there were some philosophical discourses about Nirguna Brahman, Shaguna Brahman going on. And Sundari Bai, from there, continued to partake in that philosophical discussion and said that, what are you talking about, Brahman? See, the one who eats, has the same mouth, but it is also the same mouth from where the Vedas have come up. So there is a difference of Brahman. The point uh, that I have mentioned this example is even someone like a maid could happily, easily take part in a discourse and there was nothing like untouchability or nothing like, oh my God, a maid, you know, uh, chipping in. So that is the glory of Hongkong Dev. There is another uh, very, very important part, uh, which I also would like to mention quickly is, um, you know, as we know, the Ramayana has been translated many times and Hong Kong Dev's uh, Ramayana has been translated uh, by Madhav Kundali, the teacher of Hong Kong Dev. But the last part, okay, um, has been untouched and it was Madhav Dev and Hong Kong Dev who went ahead and tried to um, uh, tried to, you know, um, uh, complete that chapter. And that chapter is uh, how um, uh, Sita, right? When Sita comes back and she was asked about the fire test to prove her chastity. In most of the Ramayana, we do see Sita uh, meekly following. After all, Rama was the uh, Mariada Purushottam and he had to live up to that sole purpose. Sita in this uh, in this Asami's um, Ramayana says, Phat dia ai boy bokumuti patalil lukao Rama Sandra Swami le mukhole nasao. Uh, Mane means I refuse to even look at the face of Lord Rama for again asking me to go through this fire test. So the woman, the SMS woman, has a very strong voice. It is not a very meek voice of, okay, you know, husband has said, I will do it. This is where I feel why Assam is so blessed. And that these words, these dialogues in the uh, in uh, Sita's mouth, Hongkordev had put. So it was Hongkordev's visionary that women too should have a voice. 
women to uh, should uh, you know uh, say whatever they want to say and that was very beautifully seen now uh, most of our honkar dev's uh, preachings have continued via nam ghors or kirtan ghar you know nam kirtan and the hotros the most important uh, place where um, hotro culture has uh, developed is definitely majuli uh, as we all know majuli is the largest river island and uh, not many people perhaps might know i'm just adding it as a footnote majuli is a combination of two words ma and juli ma is lakshmi or motherly and uh, juli is granary so that's that's where it is you know a uh, filled granary okay and here food doesn't only mean uh, the uh, the the food food but the soulful food so it's a field granary majuli and uh, there are almost about 65 hot trots but because for erosion and all the numbers have reduced and legend says that the ancient king aram arimata who unfortunately had killed his own father wanted to wash off the scene by offering a lot of diamonds and gold things to uh, brahmaputra brahmaputra flatly re uh, refused and that uh, you know that land bifurcated into two parts and majuli happened that is one of the stories so majuli is a very very important uh, uh, a place for any assamis and um, further i think uh, if i'm not wrong even um, i'm coming to the end uh, gyanashree had to go with that you know ma'am not more than 15 minutes i think i'm overshooting my time sorry for that just one last thing gyanashree and uh, i will just you know end up so um, i just want to end by you know quoting um from uh, uh, mahatma gandhi too and mahatma gandhi had very you know he was very very um, uh, he was he was so thrilled he was so thrilled at that assam and let me quote let me quote mahatma gandhi here gandhi quote a great vaishnava revival under honkar dev in the 16th century has made assamis people kindly tolerant and human there is no sign anywhere of that form of untouchability which is to be found in south india assam indeed is fortunate for honkar dev has five centuries back given the assamese people an ideal which is also the ideal of ram rajya so the ram rajya that uh, gandhi you know dreamt for uh, uh, for the whole india honkar dev had already done the job 500 years back and that's how advanced you know uh, a home is however unfortunately to this generation think it is is this not very cool to know about their own culture and uh, i read a news report recently where you know it said that the crime against women in assam is four times more than the whole of india and it made me thinking that they you know that honkar dev's women sita who had the voice and now here where have we gone wrong where, what is it that we need to do the need perhaps is to take a u turn now the u turn where we make it compulsory for everyone to read our kirtan gukha nam gukha know about honkar dev and finally i would just have to end with a small prayer if that's okay so uh, the prayer here is to me sit a briti mura probar troko na rayona to me na tho moi na tho anta sarana satra ra saya diya dura kora maya कोरा दया मुक भगंत न जानु हुआ न जानु हु बीखर जान पूजा मंत्र न जानु किंसित एते के पर मेसर दाख भैलु सर नुम Krishna, Krishna. So, um, even in this prayer, you know, it is said that uh, to be sit up, riti muro, which is 
and please please note here i'm addressing hari or krishna as to me to not as a or someone you know like you are my friend you are my companion i can address you as you as to and you are my chitta vritti you are my consciousness you are my mind and um, you know i am praying to you that kora doya uh, muko please have compassion on me please have uh, mercy on me and uh, to me natha moy natha onto you are the teacher i am the disciple and i don't know abakhono uh, you know i don't know how to do the arrive uh, to the rituals of goddess uh, arrival nor do i know visarjana how to do the visarjan rituals puja mantra no janu kinsito i don't know any puja any mantra uh, any such tantricism i just know to utter hari nam and this is what is the essence which is so very simple and this is what uh, hankar dev and madhav dev you know had given to us and with this again my salutation to shrimanto hankar dev uh, sorry if i have taken much time but there's so much about guru jana you know i could go on and on and on apologies thank you all so much for giving